Ouais. Ok. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for coming. This is our first uh, Dharma talk for the Fu Chi Wei Mountain Temple this year. I'm very pleased you all can make it. This year very special for us because uh, I've been hearing reports that of people having a lot of obstructions coming here. Uh, trying to come here for this Fu Chi here actually is very difficult for quite a few people. Uh, so it tells you that uh, it's encouraging because that means that uh, you're supposed to, you expect it to get a lot of benefits from this four chi, uh, these chi's. That's why uh, they have to stop you. Your karmic obstruction, your creditors have to stop you uh, so that they are in control. Oh. So I'd like to welcome the new people here. I noticed, for example, in San Jose, Dewey's uh, mother uh, came from uh, Nebraska, of all places. Sorry. <laughs> it's a uh, big country, right? Just between us. <laughs> uh, so uh, it it's uh, very special indeed to be able to organize it. You don't realize how difficult it is for us even to try to put it together. Uh, actually, this year has been uh, the, the, uh, for us, the internal struggles, struggles are different. In you know, prior years, uh, on the Fu Qi, the Chan Qi, during the end of the year, uh, our obstructions came in the form of internal fighting and backbiting. <laughs> People complain about each other, couldn't work together and so forth. Okay, uh, Now uh, we overcome that. You see, my point here is that the obstructions are there to help us improve. So don't be discouraged. Try to make it, try to get here. And that's the first thing you have to do. You have to manage to find a way to get here. And then once you're here, uh, just concentrate on the cultivation and drop everything else. That's all you have to do. Hmm? Don't think too much. Don't try to understand too much. Just follow along. Uh, that's all. Okay. Keep it very simple. All right. If you have anything we can do to help you or have any questions, uh, feel free. There are plenty of people who can help you okay, around here. Uh, ask your neighbors, ask your uh, co-cultivators, ask the brown rope people, ask me, whatever, okay? Please feel free. We're here to serve you. Mm -hmm. Just cultivate. Just uh, recite the Buddha's name constantly. All right? Uh, drop everything else. That's what you're learning to do. Learning to do the when. There's a time uh, where you can simply uh, drop everything else. Mm, drop your worries, drop your uh, whatever bothers you, all right? It's uh, very difficult to be able to have this kind of environment, trust me. So uh, enjoy it, okay? Take advantage of it, okay? Uh, uh, and um, as usual, also, I'm very glad to see uh, the uh, usual faces uh, from afar. Uh, especially, and they made a point to come here and join our uh, winter tea here uh, in, in our temples. I'm very pleased you're all here. And uh, also, you notice that in Korea, in Jewel Mountain Temple, you have quite a few people there as well. You see how uh, they, how blessed they are in, a, in being able to appreciate uh, this particular Dharma door here. I assure you, this for Chi is, is uh, quite a, a, a big deal. Uh, and uh, I'm glad to see uh, people appreciate it and taking advantage of it, even by intertemple uh, stuff uh, like this. So it's very encouraging. We're here to help you cultivate. That's all you do, okay? Uh, and um, furthermore, uh, we all are learning as well. I'm learning as well. I assure you, I don't know everything. I'm, you know, uh, I'm still learning. Uh, the 
Uh, Fo Chi is very special because here is my personally for me is uh, my chance to see what Master Shinwa uh, used to teach his disciples about the Pure Land Dharma door. To be honest with you, the Dharma door I'm teaching you, I read it from Master Shinwa's uh, teachings. That's it. I read it. I didn't. Uh, that's all the source of my uh, knowledge. Uh, originally, was that small booklet. The Buddha root farm, hmm? that tiny, tiny thing, very thin thing. You may want to read it yourself. Uh, it's about. Uh, it's recorded. Uh, was re, uh, was uh, transcribed from uh, his instructions when they uh, was they were invited to a piece of land up north in Oregon a long time ago when he first came to the United States uh, and started propagating a dharma. And uh, so a bunch of people showed up. Uh, uh, locally, and it's like, and uh, so they pitch a tent, and then uh, they stay there, and they uh, recite the Buddha's name, walking on the grass, okay, and being eaten alive by mosquitoes. Uh, and so Master Shui was so bad that Master Shui had to, he uh, supposedly strike a deal with the mosquito king. He says, hey, don't bite my people. <laughs> Give them a chance to cultivate. And, uh, and it seems to work. And it didn't work for a few people. Uh, and so, but in general, it was uh, different conditions. And, and that's what I learned. I learned from that particular, uh, uh, that particular um, record. Uh, but it sounds very simple. Actually, it has a lot of information that helped me uh, understand better about his type of Pure Land Dharma door. And it's the foundation for me, if you will. And what we're teaching you today is uh, actually uh, based on that, but it's much more involved than that. Because uh, after I understood the Pure Land Dharma door, uh, uh, at least after I thought I understood the Pure Land Dharma door, I felt that the way the Asians uh, did it is uh, a little bit uh, fall short of my expectations. Uh, uh, and so therefore, we started calling our brand uh, American Pure Land Dharma door as compared to, as to contrast it against the Asian Pure Land Dharma door. Uh, the Asian Pure Land uh, Buddhism uh, originated from the Chinese. Uh, so they are the originator, and we, I feel that our Dharma door is uh, significantly better, significantly more complete, okay, based on the Buddhist teachings. All right. But it is a personal pleasure to uh, also, for me, listen, for, just like you, for the first time to what he taught. And uh, I'm grateful for the many of my disciples who prepared this, uh, these uh, instructional talks. Uh, I didn't know about this until recently. There is such a tape available, uh, and uh, uh, some people, a lot of people prepared uh, these slides to make it available for us. So let's take advantage of it, enjoy it, and uh, relax. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, as usual, feel free to ask any questions anytime about anything. As a matter of fact, there's Q&A already. Thank you, Master. We just, uh, DTT and Go Forest would like to inform you that we received the beautiful beat, the gift from... Uh, Gosha. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Oh, excellent. Thank you for telling us. Uh, yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's get started then. Thank 
掌握这话，一般人呢，也不知道，还没有意思。Will blossom. How many flowers will bloom? Five lotus flowers will bloom this year. At that time, most people did not know what I meant. All right.、Uh, when you learn the Dharma, the Mahayana Dharma is bestowed upon all of us by bits and pieces. Okay, because it's so huge. Mahayana is like a vast ocean, and、uh, you、well, it's not possible for us to learn or even try to comprehend the entire structure. Okay, the structure of Mahayana would take us、uh, billions of lifetimes to be able to、uh, have a grasp. So it's okay. Don't worry about it.、Uh, when you listen to the evening talks or lectures, just relax. Okay, that's all you do. Just listen. Don't try to understand. Okay, if you're curious, ask. All right, that's very important. Okay. Uh, uh, this is why we have this practice of、uh, listening. Most importantly for us, for me, is to help you、uh, listen to、uh, the great teachers. That's my emphasis.、Uh, listen to teacher like Master Shenhua.、Uh, I don't feel that you're going to be able to find a teacher like him for a long, long time.、Mm. Uh, similarly, like when. Mahayana was、uh, transmitted from India to China.、Uh, Master uh, Bodhidharma was sent from India to China,、uh, and Bodhidharma uh, is uh, was a very advanced uh, monk. Uh, uh, and and similarly, when China was transmitted from、uh, Buddhism was transmitted from China to the U.S., they had to send someone called、uh, Shenhua. To do it, so you you, you can tell the Master Shenhua is no ordinary being.、Uh, no, he's not a Buddha. Okay,、uh, Buddhas don't have to do this. We have plenty of of、uh, talented people to be able to do this. Okay,、uh, and but he's a very very special patriarch, no ordinary patriarch at all. So you see,、um, you see,、uh, for us to be able to listen to him, we have this kind of record. Is a is a tremendous treasure. Trust me. So cherish it. Just listen to it. That's all you do. Okay.、Uh, doesn't matter. Just listen. Goes in one ear, goes out the other. Okay. And, and doesn't have to make sense. Okay. So you're planting these incredible seeds.、Uh, without these seeds,、uh, you will not be able to understand Mahayana. At a deep level.、Hmm. Okay, continues. Then, after that, there are five people in the class. Then, they say, "Oh, this person." Then, they say, "After the five people entered the monastic life, they exclaimed." Oh, Master announced on New Year's Day that there would be five lotus flowers. Five lotus flowers will bloom in Buddhism this year. Ah. 啊，现在有五个出干的，这是代表五朵莲花。Now we have five monastics, so they must represent the five lotuses. 那么以后就陆续陆续啊，啊，就有人来出干。After that, more people came to join the monastic order, little by little. 到这出家呢，啊，在我那出家，都是要吃一餐，嗯、啊，最低限都吃一餐，早晨也不吃，馒头也不吃。
to enter the monastic order, everyone who enters the monastic order under me must eat one meal a day. Minimum, they must only eat one meal a day. They don't eat in the morning or evening. After they're able to endure the first condition and not be afraid of hunger, the second requirement is not to fear cold. So they can endure hunger and cold. In addition, I do not allow them to rest during the day. No break is allowed during the day. We rise at 3.30 in the morning to do morning recitation at 4 a.m. After morning ceremony, they cannot retire until 10 p.m. This kind of lifestyle repeats every day. After morning recitation, they would sit in meditation for two hours, and after that, they will all study sutras and work on translating the sutras from Chinese to English. At 5.30 in the evening, they will attend language class. There are different language classes every day. Sometimes there would be a Chinese class, sometimes a Japanese class, sometimes a Sanskrit class, sometimes a German class. Sometimes a French class, sometimes Spanish class, sometimes Portuguese class. In general, we have plenty of language classes. Why do we want to study so many languages? This is the preparation for developing talented people who would be able to travel to various countries to propagate the Dharma in the future. From morning to night, there's no idle time, no resting time. Okay, let's stop. Let's revisit this uh, from where we started. Okay. Um, 
We continued from the last time, so that's why uh, uh, he started by saying that the five of uh, the five uh, lotus flowers will bloom this year. That uh, I think referred to the fact that the first time uh, he accepted five left home disciples, and, and they will uh, then be sent to uh, Taiwan uh, later to receive full ordination. Uh, so, uh, so that's a big deal you know, for American Buddhism. Uh, that they had uh, five official sanghans back then, okay? And it's pretty impressive because those people were primarily uh, um, Caucasians, huh? and, and uh, they uh, became enchanted with, uh, uh, enamored with uh, the Dharma and Master Shenhua taught. And the, he actually lectured on the Shrangama Sutra. And after the lecture, uh, quite a few people wanted to shave their head. Yeah. Uh, so he's a great teacher um, and uh, helped uh, a lot of people open the wisdom very, very quickly. Uh, and uh, for us Buddhists, uh, lotus flowers uh, are symbolized uh, these people brought forth the mind to be uh, bodhisattvas, to engage in bodhisattva practices, to be in the mud, uh, jump to the mud, and, and, uh, and do their work, and not mind it at all. Okay? Um, and uh, I don't know what happened later after, but uh, later uh, it seems like they uh, forgot about that doctrine uh, where we engage, we don't disengage from society, from life. Uh, Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, they, these people at that, at that time, he's very limited in resources. Uh, so they, um, they uh, uh, these people, these uh, five early uh, Sanghans, uh, they, um, they were not afraid of their difficult conditions, number one. He asked them to eat one, only one meal a day, not even any breakfast, no dinner, of course. Uh, dinner actually, in general, is not good for you. Um, the way we uh, eat dinner is actually very, uh, it's not good for our health at all, uh, in general. Okay. Uh, so, uh, but, uh, but they didn't even get to eat uh, breakfast, breakfast either. There must be a reason for it, is because they were Caucasian, and therefore, when you have uh, less fuel in your body, then you have less uh, desires, fewer desires. And that's the one of the trick, early tricks he used. So, so that's a, that requirement was a way to screen out the people who are not serious. What happened is that when you first start eating one meal a day like that, in this kind of environment, you get hungry. And because you're hungry, naturally, you will, uh, you will cut off your outflows, you reduce your outflows, and uh, you will get used to it, and you, uh, you will not be as easily afflicted. Okay? So that's why typically, uh, for them, they had to hide within the four walls, within the compounds, because once they go out, they will get hungry. Uh, so these people back then, I imagine, that they would stay within the temples only. Okay? Uh, uh, and, uh, and they, uh, furthermore, second condition is that they are very frugal. And the Master Shenhua uh, preferred not to use any heater, because that's expensive. Uh, as you can imagine, his uh, resources were very, very limited. He had virtually had no support whatsoever. Okay. So he, he, uh, so he needed to cut, uh, cut the, uh, re minimize the uh, expenditures, because he's the first one, uh, one of very rare few teachers who did it the, the traditional way, that is, he supported all his people. They didn't have to pay for anything whatsoever. No rent, no money, no whatever, okay? All they had to do, 
these people had to do was were to come and uh, practice. That's it, single-mindedly, and that's uh, a very important tradition that he brought to uh, this country. Uh, in in that, um, it, it opened my eyes into uh, into understanding what it takes to train left home people. Okay. He's very successful at it. And later I went out and I left and I w uh, went around and saw the other programs. Uh, they're a lot better off. They're a lot uh, uh, much, much um, more amenities, uh, much more pleasant, much more comfortable. And that's why they don't make uh, as much progress as his disciples. Okay. Mm. And so uh, he, uh, and the cold, uh, his temple is very cold. I first came to his temple, Long Beach Monastery, uh, I think around November. Uh, uh, and uh, Long Beach Monastery is in Long Beach, it's, uh, it's by the ocean, uh, clear and near the ocean, so on Ocean Boulevard and Rodondo. Uh, and, and I talked to the monk there, his disciple monk, Malaysian monk by the name Hung Te, who also now has left the association as well, and uh, talked to him for half an hour. I was wearing this polo uh, shirt uh, uh, and a button-down shirt, and then, and then uh, a blue jean. I still, still remember that. And I talked to him, he said, he sat down, he says, can you cross your legs? And said, uh, what is crossing your legs? He said, you say, left leg first, right leg next. And I did it, and he chuckled and said, ah, you have blessings. Okay, so I didn't know what he meant. I sat there and was able to do that for two minutes. I hurt so much, I unbuckled immediately. And but talked to him for, uh, for two hours. So he taught me how to meditate. Okay, uh, and uh, after I left, I went home. Uh, and I realized I caught a cold. <laughs> so for two hours, uh, he taught me uh, looking back very quickly, like within five, six months, I realized what he taught me didn't work for me at all. <laughs> so uh, how, that's my, my experience with them, with his uh, teaching is that his teachings to his disciples, for some reason, none of it worked for me. <laughs> but anyway, so the, his temple is very, very cold. Yeah. Uh, and the cold uh, is, is, is by that way. Yeah. It forces you to not be scattered. Uh, if, you, uh, you, if you think, the cold will penetrate you. Okay? Yeah. But... Uh, but, uh, but it's okay for young people and so forth. But for us, especially nowadays, you have older people at the temple, we are a lot more, we compromise a little bit. We make sure that they're warm enough and uh, if need be, turn on the heater. Okay? Yeah. So please feel free. If you're cold, let us know. We we'll provide you with either personal heaters or whatever we can do to make sure that you don't get in trouble. Okay. Mm. Um, so back then he says, uh, you want to be a left home person, you have to endure uh, uh, eating one meal a day, so endure hunger and endure the cold. Uh, and during uh, this thing here, uh, he during the training here, uh, the whole time, these young Caucasians, uh, they came and they didn't mind. Uh, they found his teaching so interesting that they didn't feel they had to rest at all. Uh, uh, so they would uh, rise at 3.30 in the morning and to do morning recitation and so another first as well in this country because typically the other temples, uh, they, can, they would not dare push their students too hard. Uh, the students would quit otherwise. Uh, so he's the first one who says, hi, you know, we're going to get up at this. Uh, and and uh, it's really, there weren't that many people. Mm, when I was there, uh, years later, uh, 40, 50 years later, 
But there were still that many people who could take it. Hmm. Uh, during a chi, uh, this is uh, as many as, as uh, they typically get. Uh, only temples only get really crowded and busy when there is one day assemblies where people would come for one or two hours and then attend ceremonies and then have lunch and go home. Hmm. Okay, so that's typical. Uh, so, uh, uh, and what he did also is very interesting because of his schedule here and he became famous. Like he is a monk who teaches disciples how to cultivate. Okay? He taught people how to cultivate. So what he did is the other temples in the Bay Area, uh, uh, in California, would imitate him. They would start so-called cultivating as well. Okay? Before, it's like they would wait until the weekend people, for people to come and do ceremony, and that's done. They're done for the week. Okay? So here, you know, and now then they started, the other temples started having the cheese as well, okay? Okay, the chan chi and the fo chi as well, mm. by the time I joined them. Mm. And uh, morning ceremony, uh, they uh, don't retire until 10 p.m. You see, it's a long, long day. Four to 10, uh, that's about uh, 18 hours. Mm. So what we're going through here with you, you have plenty of rest uh, during the day, so don't complain. And this is uh, for babies, okay? Uh, they're tough back then. Yeah. And they sit in meditation for two hours uh, and study sutras. Uh, and so oh, the training that worked for them, for work with these people, is, uh, was uh, to imbue themselves in the Dharma constantly. That is called two things. Uh, if you weren't here last night, it's called mindfulness. That's where we, I stole it from. Hmm? They constantly are studying sutras, la, translating sutras, listening to sutras. That's mindfulness, Dharma door. Hmm? Uh, of the great dharma, just not just not just mindfulness of any dharma, but mindfulness of the great dharma, like you are right now, listening to the great dharma. Hmm? And then translating uh, from Chinese into English as well. Okay? And then uh, since they don't, uh, uh, they, they have different language classes, is I don't understand why there's so many uh, different classes. Uh, to me, uh, from a uh, worldly perspective, it's rather inefficient. Uh, you don't want to spread, since you have limited resources, you don't want to spread it out too, too fast, mm. too much. You should choose your, niche, your niches. Huh? Is it niche or niches? Niches, okay? Mm. And focus on that. And so, uh, but anyway, uh, that's his style. His style is that there are all sorts of classes, all sorts of languages, uh, which is weird. I used to do that. I used to study different languages. Couldn't remember any of it. <laughs> nice exposure. It's fun, but uh, impractical. Hmm? Uh, as a fact, as a matter of fact, uh, they uh, have no, uh, no uh, locations in India. Huh? They have no locations in Germany. I don't think they have locations in Germany. Germany is still Hinayana uh, country. Berlin is basic Hinayana Buddhism. Uh, Japan, I don't think they like his Dharma at all. I doubt it. Okay, so that's why. But anyway, his vision is that. What's interesting here, his vision is that may not, uh, maybe. His disciples back then were really capable of doing that. But the message is that Buddhism is for the whole world. We cannot think just for ourselves alone. It's not for the Chinese alone. It's not for the Americans alone. It has to be shared with everyone. Okay? That's what I got out of this. Hmm. And the French class, uh, 
French will be very difficult to teach them. Hmm. I went to French high school. Uh, Spanish class, forget that. Portuguese, we've been in, uh, we have some Portuguese students there, and they, uh, I think uh, they're of all Europe, probably Portuguese, Western Europe. Portuguese would be a very good country to be in. Mm. And so lots of languages classes. Are we back to, tell me when to stop. Hmm? More is more. Uh, for why uh, do you want to propagate Dharma in the future? Uh, you see, that's a message. But practically speaking, uh, it's just kept them busy. That's all. Uh, so keep busy. And you don't rest so that you're practicing vigor. Okay. All these are the tips that he shared with us. Do not be afraid, phase three, you teachers, do not be afraid to ask your students to be more vigorous and more mindful of the Dharma. Okay? And no idle time, no resting time. Again, you know, uh, she's uh, these older ladies here. Uh, she should, should, uh, should, uh, should uh, apply themselves as well and uh, try not to be afraid, okay? But uh, don't overdo it. Don't pass out on us. Uh, uh, we start right here. Any questions or comments? I continue then. That's why if people wrote letters to me when I was in the U.S., I did not write back because I simply had no time. I had no time to write back. My way of teaching differs from that of other Dharma masters, no matter where I go to give a lecture or a Dharma talk. I always insist on having my disciples or those younger than me talk first, and I speak at the end. Why? I wish to promote younger people and give them an opportunity to improve. Okay, stop. Okay. So, yeah, he also said, uh, uh, back then, because he's, uh, he first started out, so he had to do everything himself. He cooked, he cleaned, he showed everyone. Uh, that's uh, traditionally how we teach in Buddhism. We teach by example. Okay? He was the one who didn't rest, who endure the cold and the hunger and so forth. Okay? So uh, that's why he didn't have time to write back to people from far away. He had to take care of the people who were there. Mm. And uh, his style of uh, lecture is different. I saw that as well. Uh, I was there, uh, I attended a few of his lectures. When he would let his disciples speak first, the junior speak first, and then, and then with, uh, as you go in seniority, and then the more senior people would then speak after, and finally he would speak, okay? Mm. And uh, he, he trying to, apparently trying to teach him how to speak Dharma. Uh, I don't think it really works. Uh, I get personally, I listened to the Dharma talks, his disciples' Dharma talk. I was totally unimpressed. 
Okay, so, so, uh, so that's why we differ in, 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 the, in styles, in, in, uh, in training, how to speak the Dharma. Okay, but this is what he did. And uh, it, uh, I had to do it myself after he died, and I was uh, told to come up and speak. And it's kind of nerve wracking. Uh, your Kung Fu level is low. I was speaking Dharma in front in Long Beach Monastery and at a city of 10,000 Buddhas. I was forced to speak Dharma when I was a novice there. And it's scary because you sit up there and you wait for your turn. Okay? Because women will talk first and then you and so forth. Uh, so the women's side would speak first and then the men's side would speak. Okay? It's kind of weird. <laughs> So, in other words, the women were more junior to the men's side. When on the women's side, there's such excellent Dharma speakers, nuns who are uh, enlightened. And we sat there and waited for our turn. And, you know, how, how rapture and rapture the audience was listening to the nuns. Then it came to our side, and we are so confused, much lower levels, okay? And so uh, it's nerve-wracking yeah, for me personally. Yeah. Yeah. But we are supposed to speak for about five, ten minutes and with translation, so it's not a, a whole lot to speak. Uh, so uh, I feel that the training is uh, not that particular effective again from my perspective. Uh, personal preference is um, I would rather uh, train you to speak the Dharma differently after. Uh, my emphasis is not so much on technique or exposure. My emphasis is more on uh, content, meaning that uh, to make you sit there, endure through, sitting through these uh, nonsense uh, that people talk about uh, in front of the podium is not a very good use of your time of our time either. Our time is very precious for you to take the time to come here. We want you to maximize uh, your benefits. Okay? So, for example, to have you listen to a person who has no wisdom yet is uh, uh, more entertainment than, uh, uh, than, uh, than, uh, than being useful. Okay? Um, uh, and so he spoke, and I didn't remember when I was there. Anyway, he is still uh, alive. I attended one or two of his lectures, and uh, I couldn't understand the Dharma. Well, I noticed that uh, his disciple was sleeping, dozing off in the back rows, uh, and uh, couldn't remember anything substantial at all. Shu was speaking at that time, and uh, really uh, not much registered. Okay, yeah. so that's why I feel it's not good use of my time, of your time. Okay, uh, young young people have an opportunity to improve. Uh, see, this is where we differ. Uh, to improve, to me, is not about technique. Uh, improve to me is I want you to improve in samadhi level first. A person who has samadhi level, okay, will speak dharma differently. Would speak dharma much better than a person low level. So if you focus on training people in their low level, it's not very effective. To me, it's not a good way to train people. So, uh, so my preference is to train you, bring your samadhi level up, and then teach you how to teach, how, how to speak Dharma later. Okay? No. To me, training has to be for purpose. Uh, meaning that uh, if you have a reason to speak the Dharma, then you learn a lot faster. So I try to build the Samadhi power first, and then when you're in a position where you must speak the Dharma, you figure it out very quickly. You learn a lot quicker. Okay? Uh, all right. Uh, but I don't know 
how he trained and uh, his people. Uh, because uh, when I train my people is when I need to see them at work uh, in action, and I will uh, correct them. Mm. So, uh, so that's why you want to give the people an opportunity to speak the Dharma or to do it. Mm. But uh, to me, uh, making these young people, these uh, low level, low samadhi level, low level samadhi people to speak Dharma is um, premature. Mm. Okay, there you go. Any questions? Okay, continue. There's a question in Go Force. Yes? Uh, Master, um, one of the questions I had was, are bodhisattvas happy people? <laughs> okay. Fair question. <sighs> Let's put it to the floor. Uh, there are two kinds of bodhisattvas. The bodhisattvas who to be and bodhisattvas, okay? In the interest of not telling you which one are the true bodhisattvas and which ones are not, uh, uh, are, true, are true bodhisattvas, I wanna put it to the floor, okay? We assume that, uh, what do you think? Are you happy? We are all bodhisattvas in training, okay? Are you happy? Don't look at me like that. <laughs> huh? Do bodhisattvas have to be happy. Is that important that bodhisattvas are happy? I ask you back, Anthony. Mm. Well, I guess. I'm damned if I, if I answer yes, and I'm damned if I answer no. I'll come again. I'm damned whether I reply yes or no, if it matters or not. And why do you ask? You see the format I'm teaching all of you is that uh, dharma transmission, dharma teachings should be interactive. It's not prepared speech. It's not where you can find to a particular area where you are well versed and you prepared and you can answer questions and so forth and you appear to be knowledgeable. Okay? Whereas uh, the dharma has to be flexible enough that it's supposed to address your curiosity, your concerns, your doubts, okay? And the Dharma is alive, it's fluid, it's not a prepared speech, it's not a curriculum like a class where you prepare the contents of your lecture and, and, and that's it. No, the Dharma has to serve anyone who listens, anyone who has interest, okay? And that's what I feel is not the difference for us, in our training, okay, uh, that, that uh, my students are seeing that, and they're seeing in the future when it's their turn to speak, they have to be prepared uh, to uh, be accommodating to all. And of course, we don't know everything. There are questions I can't answer. I will tell you, I don't know. Let me go back and do some research, okay? But this particular thing here, uh, uh, he's curious, uh, this, uh, this 
Anthony here is curious about uh, happiness, and that's why, uh, that's why, uh, as you see, at the and my students look at how I interact with them, they understand how to speak Dharma. Okay, they're exposed to it. Hmm? Um, all right. So, so Anthony says, I'm not sure. I want to answer yes or no. And what, what makes you think we want to answer yes or no? Well, I just think that. Well, I think the happier someone is, the better off they are, right? I really have a hard time hearing him clearly. Is that just my ears? Could you repeat, please? Yeah. Uh, the happier someone is, the better off they are, I believe. Okay. Uh, what do you think? Uh, yes, uh, Master Xinghua disciples there in the back. Bạch Thầy, miễn mà làm tới một vị Bồ Tát đó thì ở trên thế gian này không có người ta biết đâu. Biết là không phải là Bồ Tát, Mô Phật. Amitabha Master, I think that uh, to become a Bodhisattva in this world, nobody should notice him. But if people notice him, he's not a Bodhisattva. Mm, okay. Uh, be it as it may. Uh, okay. Uh, First of all, uh, uh, happiness is a personal concept, don't you think? Hmm? Everyone's idea of con uh, concept of happiness varies, different. So to say, to ask that uh, our Bodhisattva is happy uh, is uh, too vague for you to try to answer. Okay? You should clarify, define happiness. What is happiness to you? And, okay, and he says the, the happier they are, the better off they are. Okay, and that's a worldly concept. Happiness is a worldly uh, notion. Uh, you, you, the people, the worldly people think of it, what people think as happiness to the, to the Buddhist teaching is actually suffering. Okay, so the answer to his original question is, are bodhisattvas happy? I can tell him, yes. Meaning that you want it to be suffering? Yes, they're suffering. If they're happy in the way you think, that world people think, yes, they're happy as well, because they are in the world. Therefore, they're real. They're not there to pretend, to make pretenses. They're there to experience what we experience. We're happy, they're happy. We sad, they sad as well. Does it make sense? Okay, bodhisattvas are real. Bodhisattvas in training are real as well. Okay, both are not perfect. They still work in progress. Mm, yes, it makes sense. But so, yeah, worldly people think uh, the happier you are, the better off you are. It's a wrong notion. It is uh, we should should not think that way at all. For the Buddhist, uh, happiness is a temporary state. You're happy, enjoy it. Okay. You're not happy, endure it. That's all. Okay. Uh, that's uh, the life of a bodhisattva. We don't seek happiness, nor do we mind we're happy, nor do we mind we're unhappy at all. Does it help? Okay, uh, very good. Any other questions? Okay, uh, and bodhisattvas had comment uh, earlier about uh, bodhisattvas, you know you're bodhisattva and you're not a bodhisattva. That's how some bodhisattvas uh, prefer to be, yeah? that they don't want to be known. Uh, it's not about them. Uh, their work is about us. They're trying to help us out. It's not about them at all. And therefore, in that context, in that paradigm, then whether bodhisattvas are happy or not, it's not that relevant to them. It doesn't matter to them. They're happy or not unhappy. They're there to do a job. Okay? Yes, Q&A. Thank you, Master. 
I would like to ask a question related to teenage kid. Yes. Um, my question is, how are we install or help uh, teenage children have faith in Buddhism? Because I believe that if they just know about it, but if they don't have faith, then they can't really um, practice vigorously and can get the benefit from it. Good question, yes. Mm -hmm. Anyone has an idea, how do we brainwash our young? Hmm? Indoctrinate them. All religions must face that problem. They're our future. How do we indoctrinate them? How do we make them believe? Yes? Especially, you know you got so much out of Buddhism and you want your children to also benefit from, from it. So wh what do you do? And the key is, he says, uh, the key to her is to help them develop faith. Yes, three. Thank you, Master. Um, I, I love the Medicine Master Buddha mantra. And that one says, Be Shashu. So I always repeat that mantra, and now my daughter, that she's three years old, every time she sees you, Master, she's like, oh, Bishashu. Bishashu. <laughs> oh, she sees any statue, she's like, Bishashu. <laughs> she's sitting in, in half lotus. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I believe that the best way is when they see you really trying and do your best with the cultivation. That's right. Very good. So. Teach by example, okay? You have faith, and they will develop faith themselves. Yes? Yeah. By seeing you doing. Yes, six. Thank you, Master. Uh, in my case, uh, my mom, my lay mother, is, uh, she's Buddhist. So when I was young, just I followed my mother, and I eat the uh, Temple food, <laughs> mm -hmm. and also my mom made a plague by na my name. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I'm, I'm, I don't know about the Buddhism before, but some time maybe my mom, mother, mom made a seed for me. That's why, in the time is alive, I can be a real Buddhist. Yes. So I think that kind of process is working for my children. Yes. Yeah. So, and you help plant the seeds. Yeah, my uh, mom plant the seed. Also, I think I so also plant the seed for my children, so they can be uh, meet the. <laughs> I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I yeah. So. And you don't know how important it is how how wonderful it is for your children to see you and hear this concept about going to the temple or meditating or eating vegetarians and so forth. Okay, uh, there's exposure, not just exposure from a worldly perspective, also actually it's planting the seeds in their consciousness. Okay, it's very helpful. Mm. Okay, anyone else? How we help our young, our children. Okay. It's a problem in Buddhism. Uh, it's a very important issue for us. And, and that's why I feel that we are in an era of the, if a Dharma ending age. That's uh, uh, jargon for saying this era, this time right now, where the Dharma is shrinking, few and few people. Uh, would turn to the Dharma, and as one generation dies, the next generation shrinks in terms of believers, uh, in raw number of believers. Okay. So that's uh, they call the Dharma ending age. It's the Dharma shrinks. No two ways about it. Okay. And therefore, uh, important for us Dharma teachers, uh, the people who have some uh, good, got some good benefits from the Dharma, we need to do something to help the next generation uh, also gain benefits from it. So it's just common sense. So how we go about it, okay? Mm. First of all, uh, the, uh, uh, the thought, the desire to help them expose, be exposed to the Dharma is very important, okay? Like your 
uh, parents bringing you to your temples and eating vegetarian, so forth, seeing Buddha statues and, and so forth, seeing you in action is a very, very strong uh, gift, a very great gift you give to your children. Okay? That's very important. Uh, if you do furthermore, you look at the, if you want to know the process, how it works for you, uh, it takes a lot of blessings. It's not just exposing them to the Dharma. My focus has always been on quality. Okay? Uh, you want to expose them to the great Dharma, just like I want you to be exposed to the great Dharma yourselves. Okay, uh, that's very important uh, because it's called cultivation. Cultivation begins with planting the seeds. You prepare the field and then you plant the seeds. Okay, you prepare the field uh, by, uh, by example, by yourself, being a good person, by being a good mother, a good father, a good uncle, and so, so forth. Okay, a good uh, neighbor, a good colleague. That's preparing the field, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you plant the seeds. Uh, and the plant the seeds here, you need to listen and be exposed to the great teachers and their teachings. Those are the seeds I hope to plant in all of you. So, uh, and you don't realize how important it is. Uh, uh, because down the road, those seeds will need to be there before the next teacher can really help you use them. Okay? And so um, I can't emphasize enough the importance of planting the seeds of the great dharmas, meaning you learn the dharma from the great teachers. Not small teachers. I'm not interested in small teachers. Honestly, I don't have time. Okay? Yes, eight. From Vicky, we can't make anyone believe, but they can watch our behavior. We teach by our actions. From Goat Forest Apple, demonstrate what you are doing and share what you learn to your children. Talk about your cultivation experience, but don't tell them what to do. Very good. Okay, those uh, are very effective. Uh, we don't f force it down their throat. Uh, we just live our lives and practice our ways, and therefore they are being around us, and that's uh, the kind of exposure you want them to have. That's all we have to do, okay? But the question there is also, how do I uh, even give them great, greater benefits than that? Okay, let me explain to you the process. Again, you plant the seeds of the great Dharma. So uh, with uh, other people then, uh, not only do you behave or live your own life, but you can, for example, uh, as a, on the car, say, okay, would you like to listen to something? And you, you punch uh, the MP3 file of, let's say, a mantra thing. Okay, when, for example, when they're, uh, they're, they're throwing tantrums, you can uh, play a mantra, the Great Compassion Mantra, tape. It will calm them down. Okay, uh, depressed, play, you know, that thing. You have plenty of things that you have at your disposal that's available to you uh, to uh, help expose them to things. And you also have been exposed to uh, the different uses of these different dharmas. That's why use them, okay? Because to develop faith requires results. You cannot talk. Uh, when they see you behave, your behavior, your comportment is beneficial to them. Not just be yourself alone is enough. You have to be something. You, your being yourself is beneficial to them. That's what registers. That's what you want to register. Okay? So what's beneficial them, to them? Mm. Be kind. Mm. Be compassionate. Mm. Uh, be caring. Okay? Yeah. Uh, and, and so, uh, so, you, 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 they, so the, the seeds have to be planted, first of all. Number two, requirement, they need to have the blessings. And I cannot stress enough of this. Uh, 
the typically uh, the reason that you hear is because you have the blessings. If you don't have the blessings, frankly, the Catholic would be gone already. It doesn't matter who you are. And the reason that you can keep on coming is because you have the blessings to spend. And as you spend your blessings, you're creating even more blessings. Okay? Uh, so that's the fundamentals. It's very hard to encounter the Dharma. Typically, you go to a temple once and that's it. You cannot come back anymore. Or you don't have any blessing, you come here and you will want to run away. You cannot stay. And that's our reality. Unless you have the blessings, you cannot stay. Okay, so you have to plan, help them plan more and more blessings. It has nothing to do with logic. It has to do with the fact you have the blessings or not. Okay, so you have to plan blessings. Find ways to help them plan blessings. Okay, mm. and so uh, you learn, you eventually see, come here often enough, you see how uh, the kids are able to come here, for example, repeatedly, when other kids cannot. Yeah. And every time they come, uh, they're exposed to the Dharma and the seats, the Vajra seats, the superior seats. Vajra refers to the seats of enlightenment. Okay? It's a gift that you're giving to your children, to others. Okay? Uh, so when that happens, uh, the seats are being planted in them. Okay? So that's number two, uh, the seats and the blessings, okay? And number three, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, um, assumption from the question is that I want to do it quickly, okay? I don't want him to uh, reap the benefits after I'm dead or in uh, 20 million years. I want him to reap the benefits as soon as possible. It's so American. Yeah. Yeah. I want it now uh, kind of thing, okay? Uh, so, how do you do that? Uh, you really cannot make them believe until they have a need. Show me a person who has a need, then there are things in Buddhism that are very helpful to them. If the person says, I'm rich, I am smart, I'm successful, okay, then Buddhism is not for them. That's my experience. Hmm? Hmm. I met a, an executive of a Korean company recently on my last trip to Korea. And he says, I like you. I like uh, Buddhism and these concepts are kind of cool. Okay, I like uh, what you're trying to do. But you know what? I really don't have time for it. I have no time for it. I'm too busy, as you can imagine. Okay? So I said, you are right. Okay? Uh, Buddhism is not for you. I agree with you. Okay? So I asked him, why are you here? If Buddhism is not here for you, then why do you come and waste your time on a low life like me? He says, uh, I'm at the, uh, at the, at the, at the, seems to be uh, uh, peeking out at my company. I want to be CEO, but I'm not sure I can make it. I said, aha, let me tell you about how you can become a CEO. I talked to him for half an hour, and after that, he says, okay. No one ever talked to me like this before. Now I know what to do with my life. So we know what he did? He went to the other side of the temple and meditated for three hours. <laughs> he says, Chan is for me. <laughs> okay? My point here is that until I understand about what your needs are, until we see uh, your needs, until they have real needs, there's no point in trying to, to talk to them about Buddhism. Okay? Uh, they will not believe. 
Okay, so, so to me, all your answers are correct. I just wanted to add the three things. Uh, okay, number one uh, is about seeds, not just uh, faith in anything, but faith in the great Dharma, because your children, you deserve it. Okay, you deserve the best that Buddhism has to offer. That's available to you. Don't go for the lesser. I, lesser seeds, I planted so many lesser seeds early on in my career. Okay? And that uh, for several years I planted all sorts of uh, really inferior seeds. And later on, uh, I, several years later, I had to sit there and meditate and dump them practically. Dump whatever I learned. Because from a world perspective, I used to learn by reading, by listening. Okay? And and I, 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 it's just like a, a worldly people. I was a voracious reader and listener, so I read and read. And I heard a, uh, a new teacher in whatever language I could understand. I would read it and read and read. A Japanese teacher, French teacher, Vietnamese teacher, Hinayana teachers, you know, and so forth. Chinese teachers and so forth. I read anything and everything available to me. Unlike you, uh, I, back then I didn't have the internet. So for me, it's very difficult. I have to go and beg for a CD uh, or cassette tape. Uh, for example, the tape you're listening right now is from the file I had. One, well, uh, some of the files I had. And I used to play it on a cassette player that cost like $55. And the sound, as you can imagine, is nowhere near the superb sound you, hear, you have here. Okay, And I had to listen to it in... Chinese, which, which uh, I got about 30%, if I'm lucky. Okay, but I still listen. So the point is, you need to plant the seeds of a great Dharma. Okay, uh, number two, you need, to, you need to help them plant blessings. The more blessings, the merrier. Right, Anthony? It's not happiness, it's about blessings. Okay, and the happiness is a is a is a side side benefit. And finally, number three, you have to be patient and wait for them to look for their needs. Wait for them to come and ask you, "I have this problem. What can I do?" All right, that's how you develop faith. To me, JMT, go ahead. Yangati 매일매일 한 3, 4시간씩 있다가 가는데 약을 먹다 보니까 어, 위염이 심, 심하게 생기고 두통이 따라왔습니다. 그래서 두통약을 더 이상 줄 수가 없어서 시기하고 있었는데 두세 시간을 너무 고통을 꼭 참고 있는 걸 제가 보고는 같이 한번 용기를 내서 결과 부자를 하고 아, 가, 앉아 볼까 하고 얘기를 했어요. 왜냐하면 그현 마스터 지에게 그런 학생들이 온다고 상담을 했을 때 명상을 가르쳐 주는 게 좋겠다고 얘기를 해 주셔서 제가 자신은 없었지만 한번 같이 앉았었는데 한 30분을 앉았는데 그 아이가 30분을 끝까지 다 앉았고 그리고 저도 잠깐 눈을 떴는데 30분이 그냥 금방 지나간 것 같은 느낌을 받았어요. 그래서 그 아이한테 안 아팠냐 어떻게 끝까지 다 앉을 수 있었냐 하니까 앉자마자 두통이 없어져서 앉을 수 있었다고 해서 그러면 앞으로도 집에 가서 한 시간씩 매일 앉는 연습을 해봐라. 
아, 그렇게 했더니 그 다음날 1시간 20분을 앉아서 왔더라고요 그래서 앉는 동안 두통이 없었고 이렇게 일단 했는데 저한테 너무 신기하고 기쁜 경험이어서 공유를 하고 싶었고요 이렇게 약으로도 가라앉지 않는 학생 고통이 없어져서 너무 이 방편에 대해서 방편을 알려주신 것에 대해서 너무 감사한 마음이 들었습니다 그리고 한 가지 좀 불안한 거는 제가 부족한데 그 학생을 <웃음> 지도하는 것에 있어서 좀 불안한 마음이 아직 있는 것 같아서 앞으로도 어떻게 대화해야 할지 알려주실 수 있으면 조언을 주셨으면 감사하겠습니다. 대이죠대이죠 I have a, some interesting experience so I want to share with you. In my school, I'm working at, uh, as a nurse teacher. I have um, my own clinic room and there was a a student, he has a panic disorder and then auditory hallucination, and then he has some severe headache. So every day he came to my, my room and then rest three or four hours. And one day I couldn't um, give him the medicine anymore because he took the medicine, so, so much medicine. So, I saw him very suffering, so I suggested him to sit in floaters. And I was not quite sure how he can handle it, but we sat together for 30 minutes. And then I asked him, how was it? And then he said, um, as soon as he sat in floaters, that his headache disappeared. So I told him to sit in for lotus every day, one hour. And the next day he told me that he said one hour and 20 minutes. So I want to share this, um, very, this experience and I'm very thankful that you share me this, um, this very good experience. And one thing I want to ask you is that still I have some concern that because I think I'm very not, I'm not capable enough. So is it okay? Could you give me some advice how to teach such a student? Uh, I would not teach it because I'm a chicken. Okay, you do anything different, they can accuse you of being fanatical and trying to brainwash their children, so be very careful. Okay, uh, uh, for us, they have to ask for it. Um, and uh, they, people have to prove that they're sincere before we teach them. Be very cautious, okay? Number two, another way to help the student there is great that uh, uh, the kid has clearly, the kid has blessings. That's why he's able to sit in full lotus for 20 minutes at half an hour and an hour and 20 minutes later on his own. So clearly he had blessings. The kid has blessings already. That's why he's very receptive. Other kids who do not have blessings would not be as lucky. Okay, so typically, of those cases, uh, uh, what our uh, uh, Ru Shu is a, a different, uh, different uh, level, and I would not advise her to do this. But for example, for my left home disciples, I would teach them to help relieve uh, the kids' uh, uh, headaches or anxiety, okay? Uh, because we are trained to do that, okay? But what she did is sitting full order to them is a very good idea as well. Uh, but uh, I, would re I would limit that to at that time only uh, because once, uh, once you tell the kids to go home and do it an hour every day, you're exposing, you're opening a can of worms that's very, very difficult to handle. Be careful, okay? And the last thing you want to do is for the parents to complain and say, you know, these teachers, I don't know what she's doing with my children. Okay, we are really very limited in what we can do. Okay, 
Uh, and so uh, I'm, I'm glad that she it worked for her and, uh, and for her student, and, uh, but be very careful, uh, careful in that, in that uh, uh, stick to whatever uh, you're supposed to do professionally. Uh, don't uh, go out of those boundaries because it's not safe for you professionally. Okay? Uh, and um, instead, you should uh, meditate more and try to improve more because what, um, what happens is when the kids come to your room there, when they're in trouble, uh, if you have Kung Fu, then uh, when your samadhi level is higher, and you have more energy to give them and you can give them relief beyond the medication, the aspirins and so forth. Okay? And that's a natural thing. So uh, in her case, I would encourage her, urge her to uh, undergo more training so that, uh, and uh, not mind the hardship and be more vigorous and suffer a little bit more. And that's what it takes to make progress. Uh, in light of what the previous question, uh, are, they, are we happy, bodhisattvas in training happy? Um, we can be happier when we feel, when we see that we are making a difference in people's lives. That's our kind of happiness. Yes, when it happens, we pay the price. When you help someone, you have to suffer, folks. Okay? Uh, there's no free lunches in this world. If someone suffers less, that means that someone else is suffering more. It's taking on the burden. Okay? That's how it is. Go ahead, JMT. Indeo 예, 그렇게 남편 그리고 이제 절에서 일을 할때 무거우니까 좀 들어달라고 이렇게 해서 이렇게 복을 지을 수 있도록 그렇게 좀 만들어 찬스를 만들었던 게 있고요. 상우스 일단 여기까지. In my case, my husband went to the church and doesn't have any face. So the reason he came to the temple is that I made him. Uh, create blessing. For example, when I buy something for the temple, I use my husband's card. And then when I work at the temple, when there is something, something to move, some heavy thing, I ask help from my husband. <laughs> <laughs> 관심을 가질 수 있었던 게 이제 제가 좀 문제가 많고 누구 싸가지 없다는 게 미국 영어로 있을까? <웃음> 좀 아, 오만하다 그럴까? 차라리 어, 제가 좀 이렇게 에러건트하고 좀 이기적이 이기적인 사람이었는데 이제 미국에 여름에 한번 갔다 오고 나서 제가 8년 만에 집에 있는 쓰레기를 버렸거든요. 그러니까 남편 입장에서는 쓰레기는 그동안 아줌마나 남편이 버렸는데 미국에 여름에 한 3개월 갔다 오더니 자기 와이프가 쓰레기를 버리고 재활용 분리수거를 하고 그 다음에 이제 뭐제 대학원 동기나 친한 사람들이 저를 만났을 때 제가 백화점에서 뭐 사과를 한다든지 물건 파시는 분한테 이제 그 전에 좀 약간 갑질 심했는데 <웃음> <웃음> 내가 돈 내니까 내가 산 돈으로 당신들이 월급 받는다 약간 이런 마인드였는데 이제 그 공손하게 하고 좀 도와달라고 하고 이렇게 친절하게 안내 좀 감사하다고 하니까 제 친구들이 이제 마스터 법문도 듣고 이제 이렇게 해서 일단 음좀 약간 변한 모습 사과를 한다든지 쓰레기를 버린다든지 약간 그런 것들이 제가 좀 워낙 문제가 심했어서 그런 것들이 주변 사람들이 이렇게 좀 관심을 갖고 마스터 절에 오진 않더라도 법문을 듣고 그런 것들이 있었던 것 같아요. 그래서 아무튼 이 자리를 빌어서 물론 미국에서 
물론 힘들었지만 <웃음> 결과적으로 감사하다는 말씀을 꼭 드리고 싶었습니다. Thank you, Master. I had so much, so many uh, problems. I, I'm arrogant. I'm selfish. But after I coming back from U.S., uh, I, before I never took out the trash. My husband or some helper always took out the trash. But now I am taking the trash out by myself. And then sometimes I apologize to people and I say thank you. And then my friends are singing that kind of a change in me. They are interested in the Dharma talk and then they listen to the Dharma talk. So even if I have a very hard time in US, it was very, I really want to say thank you. Uh, is your husband there? <laughs> yes. Can I ask him a question? Ask him a question. <laughs> Why did you marry Why did her? You marry her? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Master. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <웃음> 제가 성장에 대한 욕구가 있는데 어, 이 사람하고 같이 살면 네, 어, 뭐 수행을 하거나 아니면 뭐제 성장에 있어서 도움이 될것 같은 그런 예감이 들었습니다. I have a desire to improve. I thought if I live with Jumi, I think she helps me improving. <laughs> always knows how, always has something nice to say about his wife. Isn't he adorable? <laughs> okay, we stop here tonight. Thank you all very much. Good dharmas. <laughs> Let's uh, stand up and do the great transference. Uh, where we uh, help uh, people we know, help land the seats for them to go to the pure land themselves. Okay. Thank you.